what comes to mind when you talk about resilience? For us, we see a young man who wakes up at the crack of dawn to afford for his family. We see the mother who braves the weather to make sure her grocery shop is up and running. In Kenya, agriculture is the backbone of the economy. It's that smallholder farmer in the rural area who makes sure the whole country is fed. We are built on the very foundation of resilience. But when the world came to a standstill in the wake of a planet pandemic, it only further condemned those already struggling to a size first fate. See, according to USH 2020 statistics, approximately 1.3 million people were facing crisis, that is IPC3 or worse levels of food insecurity. But at the same time, enough was being produced to feed everyone. The big question is, how is it that we produce enough, yet food insecurity remains a thing? Good question, right? But what does the research say? According to the United Nations World Food Program, in Sub-Saharan Africa alone, 30 to 50% of the food produced is lost at various points along the value chain. Post-harvest food losses are estimated to be worth $4 billion per year, or enough to feed at least 48 million people. Post-harvest losses of food cereals are estimated at 25% of the total crops harvested. Food losses and waste amount to roughly $310 billion in developing countries. More often than not, we can only talk of numbers on a piece of paper or a screen. But what exactly is the situation on the ground? With a team of 60 Enactas volunteers, we sought to get into the villages of the Kenyan Rift Valley, the country's breadbasket, and hear from the horse's mouth. For the past eight months, we've seen us pick ourselves from the ground and dust ourselves off. We asked ourselves, if not now, when? We embarked on a mission that would test our resilience, ending one of the most pressing issues in our country. When food wasted and loss occurred, sometimes it does in small quantities that seem insignificant, yet as we have seen, the effects are bewildering. Out of the 10 bags of maize Mogaka harvest each harvesting season, he estimates a loss of about three and a half. This is just maize. We haven't touched on other important cereals, vegetables, and fruits. Meet Mama Chebet, a single mother with four children and one grandchild. She lives in a small farm where she plants maize, millet, mushroom, and herbal medicine to support her family. Since the demise of her husband, she has been the sole breadwinner of her family. Our problem brings to light one of her major challenges. She's able to produce, yes, but she cannot preserve. Tunaona wakulima sana sana wanaumia wakipanda mahindi wakati wa mavuno wanafuna wanafuna mahindi na wanaanika nje sasa ile wana wanaichukua kwa nyumba hata inakuwa shida sasa sasa kile mvua inanyeshea na nikasi hata kuipeleka kwa nyumba sasa hii kitu tukichenga mtu tu anakongoa mahindi yake na na naanika ndani anaanika ndani itakuwa safe hata itakuokoa sasa ile unakimbi sana na, na mvua as we went from farmer to farmer, one thing kept recurring. Inadequate facilities or technology for drying crops and preserving them for longer periods. The most common method is open air drying, which comes with its own fair share of challenges. Slow drying, with low heat over long periods, promotes aflatoxin development, especially in maize, a staple food in Kenya. Due to its threat on healthy human living, Infected maize is therefore discarded, leading to massive loss of food that would have otherwise ended up in the food value chain. Food wasted and loss not only deprives the world of an important commodity, but this act in itself has a devastating social, economic, and environmental effect that is becoming a major global concern. With every ounce of food produced and daily wasted, there are other associated wastages in water, energy, capital, nutrition, and other related resources. Up to 70% of modern natural products hold to the traditional process of open air drying, especially tropical and subtropical breathing. Open air drying takes place when food is exposed to the sun and wind by placing it on the ground. The dry products here are often of low quality due to varying temperature levels and contamination with dust, pumpkins, and leaves. Physics is a good framework of thinking, but it leads down to the fundamental truths and reason are from there. We ask ourselves.
As with anything new, the uptake is usually slow. But with a tried, tested and working solution there to be seen, news spread fast. Just last month, we received a call from the county government of Wasingishu. This call led us to an expansion plan from just one county to several neighboring counties and potentially reach the whole country. This year, and that's for you, employment opportunities for the youth, thus enabling social mobility. Our youth are now able to earn a living and improve their living standards. With farmers preserving more, there is more than enough not only for domestic use but also for sale. By properly drying and storing crops, food that would have otherwise been wasted ending up in landfills itself. This means more food available and for longer periods. Zero hunger. We all face challenges. But it is how we brave the storms that define us. It is the ability to endure and keep raising the bar that makes the difference. We are Enakas Boy West Campus, Team Kenya.